This large emblem was used as an illustration in Andreas Lebevius's large folio volume published in 1606 as his commentary on alchemy. Here I have coloured a later fine engraved copy from Diderot and de Alembert's Encyclopédie around 1750, using the indications given by Lebevius in his text. This complex emblem shows us the stages for making the Philosopher's Stone. A large globe is supported on the backs of two atlas figures who kneel on a low pedestal. Standing between these two atlas figures is a winged dragon with four heads. From one mouth comes air, from the second a thin smoke, from the third a dark smoke containing fire, and the final mouth spews forth fire itself. These are the four degrees of heat which are being applied to the large spherical vessel or flask. This circular space is divided into three layers, indicating different initial stages of the alchemical work. In the lowest part of the flask, we find the figure of Mercury, who controls two beasts with the silver chains, a green lion and a winged dragon. The Bavius indicates in his text that these two beasts mean the same thing, namely the mercurial liquid, which is the first matter of the Philosopher's Stone. In the central layer, we see two other animal symbols. On the left is a red lion, who lets the blood flow from his breast into the sea of liquid below. On the right is a triple-headed eagle, two of whose heads droop down, one third sends out a flow of white water, or the mercurial liquid, into the sea below. Though these two animal symbols are not bound and controlled by a mercury figure, between them the cherub head of a wind god blows downwards. Beneath these three figures is a sea or layer of liquid, which is a mixture of red and white, or gold and silver. Lebavius says, that here is depicted three things needed at the beginning of the work, the body, soul and spirit required in the process. Here the blood of the lion is mixed with the gluten of the eagle. These are one way of seeing the components of the prima materia. The third layer introduces the first alchemical change. Here we have the putrefaction. The sea or a layer of liquid in the flask is now dark. Black heads of crows look out from the waters. And at its centre a small island emerges, its base being dark, but its summit is white. From the clouds above a silver rain falls down onto the island, and this symbolises the feeding and washing of Lato by Azod, and also the second solution, whereby the element of air is led out of the earth, the emerging island, and water by alchemy. Above the clouds is a dragon Ouroboros, seizing its own tail. This, according to Lebavius, symbolises a second coagulation. To him this layer is symbolic of the first solution and coagulation, and the resulting second solution. We should see this layer or stage as beginning with putrefaction into blackness, then the emergence of a new white matter through a coagulation, nutrition and washing. On top of this globe, two dark-bodied male and female figures hold up, like the atlases below, two smaller globes. The male holds a sphere in which the solar forces become altered, while the woman holds a sphere in which the moon forces are to be transformed. Between these two is a white swan swimming on a sea coloured silver, the mercurial liquid. This is a substance out of which the two elixirs emerge. The swan is said to be the arsenic of the philosophers, common to both the red and the white tincture. It sends a flow of white liquid from its mouth, to replenish the sea. In the left globe, the sun is seen rising and setting over the sea, which is the mercurial liquid of alchemy. 
which will absorb the solar elixir. In the sky above, the sun is seen in eclipse and rainbows are noticed. These symbolize the peacock's tail, the cycling of colors which appears in the coagulation at this stage of the alchemical process. In the rightmost globe, a similar process is taking place, but here regarding the lunar aspects and the white tincture. Here we have the eclipse of the moon and the appearance of the white ferment. On the back of the swan is a further small globe, within which we see the king and queen. The king has a lion beside him, while the queen has her white eagle. The king holds a red lily, the red tincture, while the queen has a white lily. Above, as the final symbolic scene of this tableau, we see a phoenix rising from its flames. Beside it fly golden and silver birds. This image symbolizes the end of the work, the augmentation and multiplication, through the phoenix stage to the numerous little birds which are the particles of red and white elixir that through projection tinct and transmute the impure into the pure gold and silver.